unknowns, the number of unknowns exceeds the number of equations, that is definitely an indeterminate structure. All right? So we have, this, we have identified that as an indeterminate structure. But guys, if, by the way, I use the word guys uh, a lot. So, but, uh, and, and I, I refer to both genders by, by the word guys. So um, you will hear that a lot. So that's an indeterminate, but what you see here, what you see here, uh, three, uh, three uh, equations of equilibrium, five unknowns. If they give you this question, what they will say, they will also say, possibly they will ask you, what is the degree of indeterminacy? What's the degree of indeterminacy and I'll tell you that simply is this is how you calculate it subtract the uh, subtract the number of equations from the number of unknowns in this case 5 minus 3 the degree of indeterminacy is 2 all right or another way of asking is the it's indeterminate to the second degree all right very good very good uh, now uh, what about the the frame you will also uh, see some frames on the exam. So uh, here are here's the frame. Tell me how many unknowns. Well, if you do that, if you identify Helen, tell me how many unknowns. Um, it would be uh, find the supports. This is a support. It's a fixed support, by the way. That's a fixed support. This is a fixed support. There are two fixed supports. Each have three unknowns. So many of you are saying uh, six. So six unknowns and. How many equations of equilibrium? Do you see any? Do you see any uh, um, hinges? No. So the equations of equilibrium three. So we have three equations of uh, equilibrium. Uh, so we have three equations of equilibrium and uh, six unknowns. Definitely indeterminate, and uh, to what degree? Third degree, six minus three. Um, Amgad Fahmi is uh, saying that he didn't get the discussion about indeterminacy. Uh, Fahmi, uh, just uh, very quickly, I'll tell you. Check the number of unknowns that you have against the number of equations that are available to you. If the number of unknowns, which are the reactions at the supports, if that exceeds the number of equations that you have available to you, that is indeterminate. All right? If you have further questions, uh, Amrat, please send me an email. Let's move on, guys. All right. Uh, let's talk about in the, uh, stability and determinacy of trusses. Trusses will be on the test. All right, you will see some trust problem on the test. And they may ask you whether it's a uh, uh, stable or determinate, mostly determinate. And I will give you this uh, equation that I will uh, share with you in just a second. But also, in terms of trusses, you will be uh, responsible to find analyze the truss, and by that we mean you have to be able to find the force in each member. For example, A, B, that's a member. You need to be able to find the internal force in that member, and also you need to uh, be able to, uh, to uh, decide whether that member is in tension or compression. The next few minutes I will show you exactly. Uh, I will show you the quickest ways to identify the internal uh, force in a truss member. Also, I'll show you how to decide whether a member is in tension or compression. But before we do that, with your permission, I'm going to go over this equation that uh, tells you whether, it's, uh, whether a truss is uh, stable or not. All right? Now, um, the equation, I'm trying to uh, erase this thing. Cool. All right. Now, let's go down here. The equation is simple. The left-hand side, 2J, is equal to M plus R. What I need for you to please note, what does J stand for? J is the number of joints. Number of joints. Now, in this truss, 
the point A, any point where the different members come together, point A, for example, that's a joint. B is a joint. C is a joint, and so on. All right? Then M. M in this equation, as you can see on the right-hand side, it's the number of members. So tell me, how many members do we have here? Just count the number of members. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I have 13. Mary Hill says 13. Those of you who are saying 13, that's correct. So we have 13 members. So M, lowercase m is 13. Now, what about R? R is the number of reactions. Number of reactions. Guys, these are the number of unknowns, number of reactions at the supports. So let's take a look. Where are the supports? One support is at A, and that's a pin support. Pin support has two uh, reactions. And then at E, we have a roller support. There's one reaction. So the total number of reactions, lowercase r, would be what? Three. OK, very good. So please help me out. The, the right-hand side of this equation, m plus r is 13 plus 3. I get 16, all right? What about the left-hand side? Left-hand side is 2 times j. j is the number of joints. How many joints are there? Just count them, a, b, c, d, e, f, g, h. How many do you get? I think, uh, yeah, John Taylor says 8. I agree. So j is 8. But you multiply that by 2. 2 times 8 is 16. So if 16, the right-hand side and the left-hand side, if they are equal, then the truss is determinate. In this case, the truss is determinate. That's all there is to it. Now, the truss would be indeterminate if 2 times j is less than m plus r, if the left-hand side is less than the right-hand side of this uh, equation. And the truss would be unstable if 2j uh, is greater than m plus r. All right. Now, let me, let me ask you, uh, we have a lot more to do, but I want to ask you a question. Uh, can you tell me, please, what is the significance of this equation? What is, what is, why are we checking 2j times m plus r? Tell me what 2 times j represents. Who can tell me? This is critical thinking. OK. Um, and Stephen Marzi says sum of fy, fx at each point. Uh, sum of fy. Yeah, that's correct. Absolutely. Stephen Marzi. Excellent, excellent. Are you are you a structural engineer? Um, here, um, two times j, guys. Yeah, okay. Um, two times j actually is see at each joint. At each joint, we have two equations of equilibrium, because each joint, for example, C, D, B, whatever, whichever joint, we consider that to be a hinge, and. Certainly, all we have to do is uh, satisfy two equations, summation of forces in the x direction equal to 0, summation of force in the y direction equals to 0. So as Stephen says, here's what, what happens. 2 times j, guys, is simply the, the total number of equations that are available to us. All right? 2 times j is the number of equations that are available to us to solve this truss. All right? That's the left-hand side. The right-hand side, m plus r, Number of members, see, the internal force in each member is an unknown. And R, number of reactions, those are unknowns. So the right-hand side, M plus R, is the number of unknowns. The left-hand side are the number of total number of equations available to us. And it, just like what we did previous to this slide, if those numbers are equal, then it's determinate. If not, different. All right, let's move on. Uh, guys, what I need for you to do is help me now uh, to analyze this truss. And you will be able to, uh, uh, you will be able to, uh, to learn. Uh, uh, next, I want to show you how you can find the internal force in each uh, truss member. 
And these kinds of problems show up on the test quite often. So uh, in this case, we are looking at the truss that's uh, in front of you. And then we want to know the force in member uh, members BH, BC, and DG. Now, we are also given the, the, the geometry of the truss. We know the, the dimension of the various members. So tell me something. What are the methods that you learned in school about analyzing a truss? There, are, there were two methods. Who could remember? Matthew, the answer to your question is no. No, it's always 2 times uh, j. That goes back to each joint. OK, Ian uh, is telling me uh, a method of joints and method of sections. Absolutely, he's correct. Uh, so there are two methods that you've learned uh, in school to analyze a truss. So anal uh, method of joints and method of uh, sections. So. Uh, I'm going to cover both of those, but here's what I'm going to do, guys, and, and I want you to be very uh, uh, pay very close attention because on the exam, you need to be able to uh, uh, to identify the quickest method to solve each problem. All right, and that's what I'm interested in showing you. I want to show you uh, where, in what situation, do you decide the method of joints would be the best or the method of sections. All right. So I really need for you to pay very close attention and, and, and understand how to decide which one would be the quickest in a given situation. Now, and what the method of section is or the method of joint, uh, we will go through both of those when I solve the next uh, two or three problems. But here is what I will tell you. Please note, if you are, for example, solving for a member Let's say A, B. This is, by the way, this is, this is point A right here. The left, left point is A. So if you're looking at member A, B, that's close to a support. If you're solving for that, I would recommend the method of joints, definitely. If you're solving for A, H, I would recommend the method of joints. All right? Now, there's one other thing that I would tell you. If you are looking at a T section, and this is really important, guys, if you're looking at a, at a T section. Now, T, this is a T section right here. Let, look at BH. You have member BH, and let me show this in, in red. Let me see if I can, yeah. You see this BH? That, that's a vertical member. And then you have AH moving all the way to HG. This I refer to as a as a uh, H section, not uh, I'm sorry, a T section at the point H. All right, uh, wh where would you, where else would you see a T section? Well, here DF is is vertical to GE, and there's another one here. So write it down. Whenever you, if you're, for example, solving for a member such as BH DF or CG. If one of the ends, look at both ends of the member, and if one of the ends is a T section, definitely, definitely what you need to do is apply the method of joints at that T. All right? That makes things very easy for you. All right? So make a note of that. Now, if you're solving for a member that, uh, let, let me go to the next slide. If you're solving for a member that is away from a joint, for example, this one, BC or CD, those, a member like that away, sort of in the middle of the truss, I would recommend that you use the method of sections. All right? So this, these are, these are uh, guidelines which method would be the, the, the quickest for any given situation. Now, in this case, the, we, we are asked to find the force in member BH. All right, guys, I want everybody to solve this with me, please. This is BH. What did I tell you? That is a T section. Right? That's a T section at H. What did I say? Well, you know, uh, you need to apply the method of joints at the point H. 
By the way, please remember, um, D. Arash mentioned this in one of his comments, 